What is up, everybody? Jay Nell here with another From Me to You. And I just wanted to talk real quick about Mr. Kenny Florian and his little troubles he's going through right now. And I know I'm a little late. <laughs> Got a lot going on right now. I have to move by February 1st, which is my birthday, by the way. And I can't celebrate because I haven't found a place yet. So I've been late. Um, I heard about his suspension right before Sunday's fight. And, of course, when Cruz brought it up in the post-fight interview, I had to look up at least something. So real quick, Kenny Florian has been suspended for plagiarizing an article he wrote for you. UC.com. He plagiarized portions of his preview article for the uh, Cruz Dillashaw fight from a boxing analyst by the name of Lee Wiley. Now, anybody have links to those articles? I haven't read either one and I'd like to, so please give me those links. This is actually kind of a filler video. I got some questions out there because, again, I haven't had time to really do the research. How long has he been suspended? Is there any money being paid? Has he contacted Lee and apologized? Plagiarism is a crime. Are there charges being pressed? I don't think so. So just any information you have on this whole situation, please feel free to give me any links or let's talk about it because, I, again, I just haven't had the chance to go there. But real quick, from what I have read, I just <laughs> wanted to make a comment on the reaction of a lot of the sports journalism community because they are cracking me up real quick first a lot of them are kind of bitching <laughs> saying that he's not being punished enough or that the public outrage isn't harsh enough partly because you know Kenny Florian is a well-liked person so of course that helps also plagiarism happens all the time <laughs> let's not act like plagiarism doesn't happen in especially when it comes to the written word all the time, not just in sports, but in politics and screenwriting and uh, uh, song lyrics. And the written word is always uh, term papers, okay? I'm um, not saying that's right, but I'm just saying it does happen all the time. So this isn't a big shocker. And plagiarism is wrong. Let me just say that firmly. It's wrong. It's a crime. So, you know, whatever should be done should be done. But let's not act like Kenny's done something rare here. Also, a lot of the sports journalism community is taking this opportunity to be like, see, See, this is why ex-athletes don't make as good as analysts as we do. You see, they're forced to steal their work because they haven't gone to school for this. They are not trained. <laughs> you know, Stephen A. Smith does it all the time. My linguistic skills, my writing skills, my connections. You can't buy my connections. Stephen, shut up. <laughs> like, you know, see, see, as if a basketball player couldn't end his career in the NBA, go to journalism school, get your credentials, and be just as good of a sports journalist as you can. Yeah, somebody can. Not all of them. Not most. Not most. But there's a few out there that can. Same thing with MMA fighters or football players. They can. However... I understand why sports uh, journalists and analysts do feel a little threatened because this whole phenomenon of the ex-athlete coming into this world is actually fairly new. This is like a my lifetime thing. If you look back to old footage of, you know, Super Bowls from the 50s and 60s or boxing from the 20s or whatever, uh, the people behind the desk wore, that were paper pushers. They went to school, got their degrees, or they worked their way up through a smaller market and got on the ESPN, which they still do now. But they, you know, rarely did you see an ex-athlete actually be behind especially a high profile athlete be behind the counter you know that was that was the nerdy job you know that wasn't the jock job so this has changed this is kind of a newer phenomenon and of course as a, a tv station or a radio station to put a star athlete who's able to speak well and who can write or whatever behind the desk to get more ratings well that's a no-brainer you know that that's easy especially with the with um uh internet and with the web you have star athletes who have their own shows and things of that nature so it really is a no-brainer so ever since this is happening sports journalists some of some of them have felt a little threatened and I, I understand a little bitter because those pro athletes ex-athletes get to bypass all of that journey to get that desk that they've been trying to get their whole life i i, I get it because a paper pusher can't push papers till they're 35 and then become an NBA basketball player. But yet an NBA basketball player can push a ball until they're 35 and then be like Shaq and get right behind the TNT desk. I get it. <laughs> I get it. And in and, and, uh, uh, defense of the sports journalists, yeah, especially when it comes to the written word, yeah, their training, their, their mind for the written word, their creative writing skills, yeah, they do actually have a knack for that better. They might even be better orators, too, if they have those skills, marketing skills, things of that nature over a ex-pro athlete. So there's, the two really do belong together. It, it really is yin and yang. They both offer very unique perspectives. You have Robin Black, who did actually fight uh, some amateur fights, but he turned pro at like 39. He did it just to get a better uh, MMA uh, perspective as an analyst. And he's 
one of the best analysts that I, that I feel he's one of the best analysts. He's from the Fight Network up in Canada. They also work with the UFC, but he is a true MMA analyst. He has a very analytical mind. He can break him down from the outside and having his experience. And we need those minds. You need those football minds, those basketball minds, those pure students of the game who may have never been on the court, but they can see things. They can put together the numbers. They can find how you can train better, mathematically make the game better, make athletes better. Those people are needed. Those people are needed. And on behind the desk or the commentary booth, a mesh of both really is ideal. It's perfect. So sports journalists, calm down. There will always be a place for you. Kenny Florian, I actually do think you're the type of ex-athlete who is smart enough to be able to do this on their own and not have to plagiarize and all of that. So shame. And plagiarism to me is just kind of a funny crime because when you get caught, you just look so silly. It's just, you just look so stupid, dude, you copied his work, it ain't your work, you get your copy. It's just one of the, a silly crime to me to commit, so, again, Kenny Florida. All right, let me uh, know any information, any, inf again, any information, I don't have uh, much information. Let me know what you thought about my commentary there on how the sports journalism community is reacting to this. What do you think should happen to Kenny Florian and all of that. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram where I have 15-second predictions and recap videos. Subscribe, like, talk to me, take care. Goodbye.